Hi there, I'm Brian Ashcraft, and I run the education and training ecosystem at TaskTalk. In this video, I want to provide a high-level introduction to creating a DevOps tool chain in the spirit of maximizing flow in software delivery. So I'm going to cover why we should create a DevOps tool chain and the benefits of having one. Then from an implementation perspective, I want to cover some great ways to get started by implementing common integration patterns. And lastly, implementing integration is best done by incorporating a common data model that ingests, normalizes, and synchronizes data across multiple sources. There's a lot of benefits to creating a DevOps tool chain, and here's just a few of those highlights. Teams really do better when their tools can talk to each other, when they're integrated. So this eliminates hours of busy work by removing the need for teams to, to update multiple tools to keep that data in sync, and usually that's done manually. I don't think anybody really wants that particular job. This improves efficiency by enhancing collaboration between teams using different tools and maybe even working in distributed environments. This eliminates errors and delays and miscommunications and problems due to lost or mishandled requests and information. A DevOps tool chain maximizes flow. So, so much of improving speed and velocity is about reducing waste in the process. So an assessment of any SDLC process often reveals significant delays and wasted time as a result of inhibitors of flow in the development cycle. So if we can address these inhibitors proactively, these delays can be minimized and the software development lifecycle can be significantly shortened, therefore increasing efficiency and reducing cost. Automating traceability is a big one. So if you're in a regulated industry, maybe like financial services or healthcare or automotive, a DevOps tool chain that is integrated can offload many of the burdensome activities related to compliance. So for example, by establishing traceability between requirements and the verified implementation. Now, as we go about architecting our processes and tooling to optimize flow, for each value stream, we analyze where the work begins. For example, when initiatives or features are initially identified. Then they're built uh, in development, they're tested, and then transitioned into IT operations and deployed into production. So flow is all about how these value units propagate through the process. And the best strategy to optimize the delivery of value is to analyze and optimize that flow. So ultimately, we want to get to a flow state where artifacts are shared across the DevOps tooling and the people. Establishing a, a tool chain is most often accomplished by way of integration. And there's common integration patterns that can help us plan and implement a DevOps tool chain incrementally. So the lines in this diagram illustrate the integration opportunities that can enable flow between the ideation, creation, release, and operation phases of software delivery. So over time, organizations adopt and deploy more and more of these foundational integration patterns to optimize end-to-end -end flow and realize the benefits that we talked about at the beginning. So looking at just one of these many integration patterns, we're looking to connect planning to delivery. So some initiatives or features are likely to be defined in a product portfolio or maybe a product road mapping tool. These items are likely to represent the requirements for the product and the development teams. So this integration pattern mirrors the high level planning items managed in that PPM or road mapping tool directly into the requirements management tool from which therefore they can be broken down into work items like epics and stories. So some of the benefits of doing this is that both parties benefit from a seamless flow of work from the planning teams to the product management teams and development and testing. So as work progresses, updates such as status flow back upstream, providing the portfolio managers with visibility on execution and completion against the plan. So how do we go about implementing these integration patterns? So what's really needed is this common data model to act as a universal translator that normalizes the data as it flows between systems. So a model is a shared definition of a unit of work. And what it does is it serves as an abstraction 
mapping layer that extracts the, the field level data in each system of record and maps it into a fixed set of fields and possible values. So the role of the data model is represented here. The model ingests a work items data attributes. So things like the name, the owner, status, and priority. And it places it into a shared standard shape and form so that that particular work item and its properties can be universally shared and properly represented across tools. So let's say that a defect may involve input and work and updates from different teams working in different tools as it flows through its life cycle. These tools may have different fields. So what the model does, for example, is it takes the, the defect name from the originating source name field of that particular defect from say the ITSM tool, and it populates that name data value to perhaps the summary field on the corresponding issue in the Agile tool. And furthermore, maybe to the ID field on the bug in the test management tool. So this normalization and standardization at the field, attribute, or property level is what the data model handles. And this also sets us up to be able to synchronize even relationships amongst these work items that ultimately captures the information that we need to capture the traceability that we want. So to summarize, an integrated DevOps tool chain enables you to flow the work between your tools to improve efficiency, collaboration, and traceability across your software delivery value streams. Integration patterns are an incremental way to get started with created, creating an integrated DevOps tool chain. And employing this common data model that we talked about is required to implement integration and begin to capitalize on the improvements in flow. So I hope you enjoy learning more about creating a DevOps tool chain to optimize flow in software delivery.